Hey there, this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I am your host, Nina Perez, and we are here to discuss life topics to challenge and transform your thinking. Let's do this. I am really excited today because I have someone here I have been listening to for like about two weeks now, and she decided that she would give me some time. So I'm excited. Her name is Coach Mel, and Melissa Stewart is born and raised in Central Illinois, and she is a certified life and health coach. She's a salon owner and a hairstylist for 20 years, a personal trainer, and she owns her own residential and commercial cleaning company. So she's just a little busy just a little. (laughs) She feels called to use her personal journey through a devastating failure over a decade ago and her rise back up to the top to help others in hope and uh, and self-belief, right? So that they can overcome their setbacks and use it for success. So she is raising two amazing teenagers on top of everything I already mentioned. And she is married to her best friend and he's what keeps her focused and going forward. And I'm really excited you are here with me, Melissa. Um, I have been really wanting to have this conversation with you. I, I feel like I know you because I've listened to you so much, you know, and I love your podcast. It's called Beautifully Restored. And just the just the title alone makes you want to listen to it. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for stepping out and doing a podcast. Thanks, Nina. I'm I'm kind of flattered <laughs> that you uh, feel that way, and uh, it makes me feel good. That's really what I want people to walk away from the. Co- from the podcast feeling. So that's great. Thank you. Oh, for sharing yeah. It. It's been fantastic. And you have great guests, great guests. So it's so good to hear. And I'm like, Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, wait a minute. That's a great idea. <laughs> I've listened to like 20 of them. So, <laughs> um, I wanted to start off by you just, I know that I gave a little bit of your bio, but if you can just introduce yourself to our listeners, so they know a little bit more about who you are. Yeah. So, you know, the bio explains a lot of what I do. Um, but man, it's been a journey of a life. You know, I started off in a whole different world and, you know, have had to morph into a new world. You know, I grew up this conservative Baptist, very, very sheltered, um, in a very extreme legalistic type environment where we were put a lot of rules on us and a lot of judgment And, and then, you know, grew up that way, thought I was going to marry, um, and be in the ministry for the rest of my life. I married a pastor when I was 18 years old and we were high school sweethearts. And I never considered doing anything else other than being in the ministry. I felt called to the ministry when I was, uh, probably 14 years old. I felt like God was calling me to, to, to go into the ministry full time. And so I thought, you know, you, you just think probably everyone can relate to this, you know, you're. 17, 18, 19 years old, and you have to kind of decide what you're going to do. I'm, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to become this. <laughs> you kind of bank on that and that's the direction you go. And boy, you know, I got married when I was 18 and thought that's what I'd be doing for the rest of my life. So I didn't think I needed an education or any training and anything else, but life throws some crazy stuff at you and things don't go the way you thought. And then all of a sudden you're just, your world's flipped upside down and you don't know what you're going to do. And that's really what happened to me. And so that's, that's part of that journey of getting here where I'm at now, which is a better place. And I'm so thankful for where I'm at, thankful for the mistakes that I made. And now, you know, owning several businesses that I started out of necessity, single mom, you know, at some point then we got divorced and had to, had to make money and thought I was going to be a stay at home mom you know, uh, in the ministry my whole life. So didn't think I needed anything. Thankfully I'd learned how to do hair and I had my license for that. So I had to get a real big girl job and I got several other jobs along with that just to survive and then created these businesses out of necessity. And now I run them out of passion and love and have added the coaching to it, which is absolutely my passion because it's helping people. It's very ministry for me. Ah, you know? I was just going to say that. Yeah. It is. So it's kind of like, I, I, I wanted to be in the ministry my whole life. And even though it looks differently now, it's not technically the ministry. It is a form of ministering and helping people. And, um, and I, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful for where I'm at now. And I, I really wouldn't change a whole lot about that. Yeah. I, I love that you said, you know, um, your mistakes um, are just not going to define you. Right. So, so you're using those mistakes to now teach others that their mistakes don't have to define them. And that's such a powerful thing because all of us have so many mistakes, right? 
I mean, at 18 years old, you also think you know everything, right? <laughs> you discover very quickly, you know nothing. <laughs> but I love, I loved your, I love your podcast because it's very honest, and you, you um, talk to your guests as if they're your friends, and maybe they are. And some of them, I, I, I know you just met because you go, hey, I don't know anything about you, so tell me a little bit about you. And I'm just like, but she's, you're so natural at that. And I was thinking that when you were talking to about the ministry thing, because what we think ministry is just turns out to be whatever God really wants it to be, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you that though. How is your faith walk? Do you still have a belief system? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, oh good. You no, know, I never doubted my faith in God. Uh, he never left me through all of that. Right. You know, everyone left me through all of that. And yeah. I tell that story and you've probably heard it by listening to my podcast and maybe following me on social media. I don't tell that story for people to feel sorry for me. I also don't want to make the church look bad or Christians look bad, but the, the church and the Christians in my circle failed me. And I, of course, let me say, I put them in a position, a very difficult position of not knowing what to do with me. I screwed up so big time here. I was in a conservative Baptist church. I was a, an assistant pastor's wife and my sin was big time. And it went public and yeah. everybody found out about it. So I put all those people in this, like this position of like, what do we do with her? And uh, it's, it's tough because looking back now, I, I can boldly say that they made the wrong decision by casting me out mm -hmm. and not accepting me in because I was sorry. I was so sorry. And I wanted, I was repentant. I wanted restoration. I wanted help. I can remember the day the the pastor and he was in his seventies, he'd been a conservative Baptist his entire life, kind of a, a soft man, but a hard man too. And he, I can remember the day we, I sat in the office crying, begging for forgiveness and him saying to me, I'm sorry, but it's better for the church if you leave. And it was kind of like a, a business decision. Like I was bad for business, you know, like sometimes businesses are better without something. And I, he thought that that business was going to be better without me because he thought if I stayed, there might be members of the church that could be offended by saying, you're going to let her stay here after what she did, after who she hurt. Mm -hmm. And so instead of allowing our family to repair and to get better, he told me I needed to leave. And I'll never forget walking out of that office walking down that long hallway, grabbing my big book off the piano, knowing I'd never play there again, knowing I'd never sit in those pews again. That, that was my family. That's all I had. That's all I knew. I didn't have a job outside of them. I had nothing. And I remember walking out of there with that book devastated and honestly feeling like, I don't know where I'm going to go. I have no idea what I'm going to do. And I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't know where I was going to, because my husband didn't want me to live at home with him anymore. We had two children. They were little. Um, I didn't know what, what I was going to do, where I was going to go and where to start. I didn't have a way to make money. I didn't have a car. I had, I had nothing. Yeah, and, I, and, and, and bigger, bigger than all of that, I didn't have a church. Honestly, I think that was the most devastating thing to me. I looked at the pastor and I said, what am I supposed to do? Like, I don't even know where to go. And I remember him saying like, you know, if you need some help, I, you know, we're, you know, we can, I can help you find a play. And I, you know, I was like, you don't even want me here. I don't know that I want, that I'm going to feel comfortable coming to you for help. Right. So that was, that was almost 13 years ago. And, um, that, that was a, that was a tough place. That was the, probably the lowest place I've ever been. My family disowned me too. Again, I don't tell the story. Like, don't feel sorry for me. The people that are listening oh, to I this now. Yeah. Don't, I don't want anyone to be like, oh my God, that's so, uh, so. Hey, listen, I did what I real talk. Yeah. It's real talk. Yeah. I did what I did. I took 100% responsibility for it. It was stupid. Mm -hmm. I can't even believe I look back and I'm like, what in the heck was I thinking? And I did what I did. And I put all those people in this very tough place. I put that old man pastor who had this church that he'd been growing and, and nurturing for 20 plus years. And I freaking took it and I just wrecked it by my actions. How could I be mad at him for that? Mm -hmm. So he kicked me out and I accepted it. I was like, well, okay, I got to go figure this out. And that's what I did. I put one step in front of the other and I never, um, I never got bitter. And I think that's what has helped me. You asked me if I saw a faith, oh my gosh, uh, I'm going to be, you know, leaving here in a couple hours and going to my church, my new church. Um, 
and playing the piano for them all weekend. Thankfully, they use me. They love me. They accept me. It's an amazing environment. It's not Baptist, but that's, you know, and, and nothing against the Baptist, but I did need to kind of just get away from that. I had to go into something different. And um, I, my faith in God was the only thing I had. He did. He's the only one besides my brother who didn't leave me. How could I ever turn my back on him and for something that I had done? So no, my faith has really never wavered. Now my right. trust in church. Yeah. It's been a little shaky and I'm careful. I'm very careful, but I am so thankful for God's restoration power, his forgiveness, and um, all of those relationships that were broken have been restored. That same old man pastor, he's in his eighties now, him and his wife, they come to my salon and I do her hair. And it's been a lot of years before that happened. They called me like two, this was 13 years ago. They called me two, three years ago. And she said, Melissa, I can't find anybody that can do my hair right. And she said, preacher, preacher told me that's her husband. Preacher told me to call you. And I told, I said her name and I said, of course you can come. I'll do your hair. I'd love to have you in there. So the same people that cast me out and kicked me out, uh, our relationship has been restored. My relationship with my family is 100% restored. My parents are my biggest cheerleaders. Right. I never thought they would ever be proud of me again. And my parents are very proud of me. So my story is one of restoration. That's why I call my podcast Beautifully Restored and to show people that not only can your life be restored, but relationships many times can be restored and everything can be restored back to you tenfold if you do the right things with your life in that time. I could have taken it a lot of different directions, but I decided to keep going, to not be bitter, to take full responsibility and blame no one but me and to make it right. And I think that's why I have the full restoration that I have. Yeah, I believe that. I mean, even uh, as you were saying that, I was thinking she owned her shit. She owned it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You yes, I did. It. Yeah, I'm not even supposed to say that word, but hey, you owned That's it. Okay, girl, so you gotta say it. <laughs> I did. I mean, honestly, because I live my life like that. That is literally my motto. Like, I live my life like that. If I did something, I own it. I own it right? Because I feel like that is the way I'm going to be authentic. That is the way that people will receive you to be authentic. And that is truly the way you can transform the lives of others, right? And that is the goal, right? It's not about really about Melissa, as much as it is about everybody watching you, including your children, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're watching, they were impacted as well, right? Oh, so God, they're yeah. watching and they're going, okay, how is she going to do this? How is she going to do this thing? Is she going to be bitter? Is she going to be angry? Is she going to blame others? No, you owned it, you know? So now they can't do nothing. They got to own their stuff too, you know? Right, that's right. <laughs> and they're teenagers. That's so right. that is really hard to own your stuff when you're a teenager. <laughs> so true. Yeah. I, I got to say, when you brought, you brought up the kids, a lot of people are so ashamed of their past and they hide their past. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was for a, lo a lot of years. So 13 years, you know, it hasn't always been this way. The first many, many years I hid my past. I hid my story. I wasn't openly talking about it. Um, uh, I, I, I wanted to kind of separate myself from it yeah. and, and kind of be like, that's no longer, I'm trying to be new. And, and, and that's true. I do want to do that, but I also want to use my story. My story is powerful and I've used it in the life of my children. I tell my, my, tell my kids, they know exactly what I did and they know all the consequences I have paid for it. Mm -hmm. And I am honest with them about that. So they know sin and your sin and your mistakes or however you want to call it. If you're a, you know, if you're a believer and you want to look at it as sin, if you want to just say that it was failures, mistake, these things impact not only you, but they impact those around you. I hurt hundreds of people with my sin. Right. And I want my kids to know you do not, no man lives on an Island. Everything that you do affects others around you. And so I have, I have taught my kids that and shown them that if you make a mistake and you will, but if you own it and you take the steps forward to be better and to grow from it and to learn from it and to be used by it and, be, and then forgiven and restored and all of that, you can be better and stronger for it. And I have witnessed my kids now come to me about difficulties in their life. And they've even said, my son even one time said, mom, I knew I could come to you about this because I knew you wouldn't judge mm. because I, because of what you've been through. I was shocked when he said that. Powerful. And it was like, you know what? I'm so glad that I've been honest and I didn't hide this from them. Yeah. 
and I didn't chuck it off on somebody else and say it was somebody else who did this. And I, you know, I'm not, I'm not to blame because I've taught them. My kids could have lost a lot of respect for me when they found out the true story, but instead they see who I am now right. and they've earned respect for me. They're actually proud of me. It's really cool to know that my kids are proud. My, my daughter tells me that mom, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Isn't and that, that great? Awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes you human. It makes you human, right? I mean, um, my kids are the same. I wrote an autobiography about my life. My life was, <laughs> and so I, I had to be honest and truthful. My kids cried through the whole reading of the book or whatever, but you know, there's something powerful when your kids tell you that they're proud of you, right? Because you know how you feel when you're proud of them, right? And it's such a cool feeling to know okay. that, you know, and they're the most important. They're like the most important. So if they, if they don't judge you, who cares who does? Then who cares who does? Absolutely. <laughs> who cares? I don't care. <laughs> I do love something I heard you say, Melissa, and I and you said it in your very first podcast. And you said, my growth can be more powerful than the destructive mistakes that I have made. And it brings me hope. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so freaking powerful. Did you write a book yet? <laughs> Not yet, but it's on my list. Good. It's on it's one, it. of my, one of my Got goals it. I write every day. I write that I've written a best-selling book Got and so I, I do. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that. I haven't, I haven't said that statement in a while. I actually heard it from a pastor's wife at my current church. And she said that even though, yes, our sins, our mistakes, our failures affect a lot of people, our growth can impact and affect far more. And when I say that my sin and my mistakes hurt hundreds that's a lot. Like a lot of people would go, dang, like my sins and mistakes don't affect hundreds. They affect like seven people. Maybe mine affected hundreds because I was, I was a leader in a church. Right. So we're talking hundreds, but guess what? My growth and my, and, and my restoration and my story now and who I am can impact thousands, right? If not more. If and not more. that's, that makes it worth it. And that makes it awesome. And that makes it you know, I'm so thankful for, for that. I just posted yesterday on Instagram about do-overs because I heard John Maxwell talking about it. You know, if you could have a do-over, would you have a do-over in your life? And it's, and if you know, if you, if you're, if you realize the power in your failures, you would say, no, I would not have a do-over because all of that makes me who I am today. Right. I mean, hindsight is beautiful. <laughs> Hindsight, hindsight is beautiful. Is beautiful. <laughs> I know when you're going through it, you're like, no, oh, but hindsight is a beautiful thing. So what is like something that you give people when, um, I want to go back a second. How hard was it to enter a new church? Because wasn't it a little scary unless you did it after you started your podcast? I'm not sure, but I would think that it would be a little scary. Like the new church would find out. Oh, right. Wow. Was that tough? Yeah. Good, good question. Because the first, so the church I'm at now was not the first church I went to straight out of that mess. I went to first, I went to another Baptist church and then another Baptist church after that. I walked in there basically with a sign that said, my name is Melissa Stewart. And this is what I did. Mm. I felt like I had to tell everyone. So I pretty much made a relationship with the pastor and his wife at both churches, those first two churches and said, I got to be honest with you because this is why I did it, Nina. I felt like, I felt like it was only fair that they know so they could decide whether or not they wanted me there. Wow. And it's kind of sad that mm -hmm. I felt that way, but because of what I'd been through, I genuinely just felt like it was only fair. Yeah. In fact, I did this with friendships, with boyfriends along the way in this journey. I felt like people needed to know. So I almost kind of led with it and would tell people about it pretty quick, just so I could be like, you know, do you still want me around? Cause if you don't, I understand. Wow. I, I was very humbled about it. I felt pretty low about it. So I thought people had the right to know. I also especially felt like with the church, if they wanted me to like be involved in the music ministry, cause I sing and play the piano. And I knew I would probably never be in a teaching position ever again, but I thought, well, music, maybe I could still be used in the music. And I felt like they needed to know that, like, you may not want me up on the platform because if people find out what I did, they may be like, really, you guys have her up there. That's the way I viewed it. Now, uh, this church that I'm a part of now, I did not 
lead with this story. By the time I got to this one a handful of years ago, I had created a new identity for myself. Right. And I did not identify with that person any longer. And I felt like people, hey, I'm telling, you know, the pastors of these churches are not coming to me and telling me all their sins right. and all the mistakes that they've made. <laughs> Before you, say that. <laughs> before you come to my church and become a member, let me tell you everything I've done in life. Right. Why do I feel like I need to do that? Right. I finally, you know what changed that for me, Nina, was surrounding myself with people who ha- who put that belief in me. My husband was like, you don't owe your explanation to anybody. My husband now uh, that I've been married to for, well, we've been together for like almost seven years, but he was like, you don't owe that explanation to anyone. And you know, that's not who you are. And so I think just getting around people that empowered me in that way. Now I don't walk into a church, but yes. Oh my gosh. And I still have that fear. Like what if people find out if I, if I lose a client at my salon or something like that, I used to think like, maybe they found out about me and like how bad of a person I was or something, but that's less and less. I don't think about that as much. Yeah. Well, because if if that's their attitude, then you don't need them. Exactly. Um, you know, you really don't because let's, exactly. let's not sit here and be phonies. We all got some stuff, you yeah. know, right. and if, if everybody found out all of our stuff, man, we would have very little, little friends for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to ask you like, um, how you now take all of that. And I know you started your podcast to, to kind of slowly, um, show people that they can overcome their mistakes as well. What do you say to someone who is stuck in that mistake? Like, how do you encourage them out of that? Because that's a difficult thing to constantly remind yourself that you are not the sum of your mistakes. Mm, Yeah. You first have to have a lot of self-forgiveness and love and compassion and realize that we all make mistakes and you're not a bad person. You know, you, we, we are broken people sometimes and you know, there's, I could probably, you know, see a therapist and they could give you all kinds of explanations of why I did what I did. Right. You know, you could go down that road too, to kind of figure out why maybe you went down the path that you went and all that. But when it all boils down to it, we're all just broken and hurt people. Uh, and we make mistakes, but we don't have to identify with them. They don't have to become who we are. And the important part is, is that moving forward, we, we are changed and we have decided to be stronger and better. And I always say that when you're in the middle of that, or you're just out of it, you know, in the early stages of coming out of a difficult situation or whatnot, you look forward and you cannot see the road ahead. You definitely can't see the destination. I had no idea where I was going. I had no idea where I was going to end up. I didn't know if I'd ever find anyone that would ever want me again. Um, I didn't know how I would develop a career and and provide for me and my, my children. I had no idea but I didn't need to know all of that. Mm, That's good. I didn't have to know every step of the way. All I needed to know was one thing, the first step. Yeah. What's what's the first step? What can I do right now to to just move myself, just inch myself forward. And then once you inch yourself forward that little bit, then you just think about the next step after that. You don't have to see and know the journey because the journey is going to take you in in a different way than you ever planned anyway. Just know that you just have to take one step and and then if you take that, you can go from there. That's so good, Melissa. So good. <laughs> good stuff, man. <laughs> talk, right? right? Life is a beautiful thing. Life is a beautiful thing. And I, I love being broken. It's, it's like one of the best things ever because I realize, especially the older I get, that I really don't know anything, <laughs> you yeah. know? And it's yeah. a beautiful thing to constantly learn. Although it hurts sometimes, it's a beautiful thing to constantly learn. I wanted to um, ask you one more question. Do you feel like, because you have faith, do you feel like that is what kind of helped give, give you a foundation? Do you feel like that was a big a big thing for you to help you move forward? I think so. You know, I try to, st- I try to keep my mind open to the audience of people that are listening to me and you. Yeah, absolutely. Me that they're maybe not, they're not the same kind of believer that we are, or maybe they put their faith somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And I try to respect those people uh, because I know we all have different, we come from different walks, but it is a source of strength for me. Yeah. Um, me too. God has forgiven me of so many things. And because of that, uh, and I, you know, and I believe that he sent his son to die for me. I believe these things. This is part of my faith and who I am. This is who I am. 
Um, and some people may not understand that, but he, he forgave me of so much. I, I always looked at that as how could I not forgive other people? Mm. So what helped in my bitterness was that I, that I forgave other people that had also wronged me. I forgave my parents who didn't know what to do with me at the time. So they just had to take their hands off and leave and, and go for a while. I forgave them for that. I forgave that pastor and his wife. I forgave the people of the church that didn't reach out to me because I'd been forgiven of so much. How could I not forgive them? So that kept me from bitterness. So my faith played a, a role in that. And then also just in those moments when I was alone and just tortured in aloneness uh, at night sometimes, and just thinking about what I had done, just knowing that I had God saying, I love you anyway, yeah. you know, you are broken, but because you're broken, I want you like, I want you more now because you're broken because you're more usable. I can do so much with you because you're broken and you're willing. Yeah. And that's just huge for me. I drew very, very close to God during that time. Yeah. So I think it was a big part of it. Um, although I do have a lot of self like belief and strength now about myself, getting healthy physically yeah. and getting strong. I lift weights, all that stuff helped me too, outside of my faith. Yeah. So there's other avenues, but man, my faith, I, I don't know if I could have done it without. Yeah, I feel the same way, but I, I do respect other people's views as well, because I think that once you own your stuff, faith or not, it humbles you. Mm -hmm. you get humbled. And so when you get humbled, I think it is easier to forgive. It is easier to see other people making mistakes. It is easier because you just, you know, faith or not aside, you can see it and go, hmm, I know what I did. Yep. You know, I, I know, yeah, yeah. I know that I'm not a hundred percent, you know, the best perfect person. So that's a good thing. And it's very humbling. And I, I think, um, you know, uh, humility and being humbled is a very powerful thing in your life. Own it. It's fine. Just yes. own it you know, and I think you're going to get far. Mel, you are amazing. I wish I was like next door so I could run over and just give you a oh, hug, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give you a virtual hug since everybody's like now virtual, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's been a great time with you. And thank you for um, sharing your heart with us the way you have. And if you don't mind just um, letting us know how we can find you, how we can follow you, listen to you, all of that great stuff, please. Yeah. The best way to find me is Instagram. That is my platform that I prefer. I'm not even on Facebook right now, but Instagram it's Mel coach, M E L C O A C H eight zero Mel coach 80 on Instagram. I have a link tree there. So my, it links to my website, my podcast. Um, I do put my podcast on YouTube on the channel coach, Melissa Stewart, um, but it's also on iTunes and Stitcher, Spotify, Google, all that stuff too. Uh, it's called Beautifully Restored, as you said. But really, Instagram is a really easy way to find me because you can just go to my link and my profile and everything's there. So that's fantastic. And I am, uh, well, I'm already a follower. I'm already a fan. So oh, <laughs> you're oh, good. <laughs> In fact, I, I have you on my phone right now because I was listening to you talking to Casanova. And that was awesome, awesome. <laughs> that was all yeah I mean but all of your guests are awesome and you're just so natural at talking you're into sports I, I see the bears and all this other stuff I'm like I know nothing about sports, we'll <laughs> sports yes. but I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to be here with me thank you Nina thanks for having me you are great thank I you. adore you thank I appreciate you. you and uh thank you for having me on it means the world to me yeah, me too. I mean, like I have to, you know, I kept going like this because I had to get the tears out of the eyes, but it was beautiful. Thank you guys. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and listening to us. Um, don't forget to go on and subscribe to our channel straight talk, no sugar at it with Nina Perez. I will make sure to link all of Melissa's information so that you can find her, listen to her. She's fantastic. So thank you guys so much and we will see you soon until next time. You have just listened to another great episode on straight talk no sugar added don't forget to subscribe so you can get more amazing content also visit our website and youtube channel until next time with more great episodes coming your way